right, y'all, you know that at this point, things are getting about as scary as breaking down on any street name MLK right now. <laughs> Bidenomics has been about as good of an idea as sharing a camping tent with Kevin Spacey. So, look, there's this great conservative girl I watch all the time. Her name is Isabel Brown. We're not actually related, but we got the same name. She posted a video, and it is going viral as heck now. I just want to talk about this morning because... Um, the video she posted is how we're actually living in what they call a silent depression. I was thinking, whoa, okay, I got to hear about this. And she was just highlighting how if you just snapshot 1930, I know every single year is different, but we're just going to take a for instance here. If you snapshot 1930 for the average American individual, they were making about 4,800 bucks a year, okay? Adjust that for inflation now, it's $87,000. We're not talking about household income. We're talking $87,000 for an individual in 1930 adjusted for inflation. Now, the average salary in America right now, 2023, is 56,000 bucks. Now, so we're actually making less than the people back in the Great Depression. So you go deeper in the 1930s, hell, it just gets worse, right? So Isabel was saying, how can we possibly be living in a time where the cost of living is actually worse than the Great Depression back in 1930 and nobody's acting like it. Nobody's saying a thing. Now, I will add that back in 1930, there was like 25% unemployment. Okay, so we still feel like we're in the fight. But the thing is, you know and I know, we ain't. It's also not talked about because we're spending all of our time now talking about how boys can have hoo-hahs and girls can have ding-dongs. The moment we walk inside of an economics class, we're screwed forever. Back in the 1930s, it's also important to note that people had nine to five jobs, not 70 hour work weeks just to barely scratch by. Plus back then, those people couldn't call 1-800-CASH-NOW like your cousin Jimmy living with his meemaw up in the woods somewhere. They didn't have credit cards back in the 1930s. They're taking um, the American dream completely away. The real American dream died before most of us were even born. Career politicians on both sides have sold all of us for their own benefits and we can't even vote our way out of this. And I don't want y'all to be fooled because I know a lot of people saying, look, I got uh, entrepreneurs that I know that are selling out of their products in just, you know, days. I know restaurants that have huge uh, reservation lists where you can hardly even get in. What are you talking about? Business is booming. We're not living in a silent depression. But do y'all know why that is? It actually speaks to a much darker psychological issue. People have given up on the big stuff. We're just trying to live in the small stuff now because everything big seems unattainable. So if your business seems like it's thriving, congrats, we're happy for you, man. But that ain't the norm. It's probably because your customers are either rich or because you're counting on customers who are middle-class income who don't mind running the hell up out of their credit cards, just in debt for life. They're like, screw it, it's done, it's spent, I'm just gonna live my life and celebrate these small victories. So what's the answer, buddy? The answer is to live below your means, just like our grandparents did. Eat more out of your garden and less from Sonic. <laughs> Bidenomics is the most worthless invention since, I don't know, courtside seats at the WNBA. <laughs> Who wants to be a part of that, you know? But millennials, I feel like, y'all hear me on this, millennials are cursed with the feeling that they need to act rich. Damn it, y'all, that's just wrong. Stop acting rich. You're 23, you ain't supposed to be rich. You ain't had many working years yet, and that's okay. Remember back in 1930, that people lived in like little two-bedroom houses. You know, we choose to spend a whole lot more today, even though we don't make as much. So you could almost call this a voluntary depression. How about that? You know, they didn't have the expenses like cell phones, door drop, big screen TVs, internet, uh, an Amazon app, right? You know, you could call this a voluntary depression because it's not just rich people who demand to live way up here now. It's every single class that is told you're at, you know, 23, 24, 25 years old, you should be living up here. You should be taking pictures on Instagram inside of a private airplane that you rented for an hour. Cut the crap. You know what I'm saying? I would hope everybody watching this channel is way better than any of that. There was a time when a one family income could buy a house, a car, and still raise a family. And I keep thinking back about Solomon, who was the most richest man in the Old Testament, incredibly wise. He had everything your mind could ever imagine for that time and yet he still wrote when i surveyed all that my hands had done and what i had toiled to achieve everything was meaningless like chasing after the wind nothing was gained under the sun so he concluded with 
Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Awesome stuff, no matter how far you go. Great to have you here, have a great week. Thank you.